The composer, Henry Purcell, lived during what was known as the Baroque period and was one of the most important and famous composers of his time. He spent much of his life in the service of royalty as a composer, organist and singer. And although he died at the age of 36, he wrote a huge amount of music for popular entertainment and musical dramas. The piece Music for a While was written as music to accompany a play called Oedipus, which is based on a Greek myth where the main character Oedipus kills his own father and marries his own mother by accident. When he finds this out, he kills himself. The character Alecto, like a goddess, is a fury, but has snakes for hair. She has the role of punishing people like Oedipus who kill their own parents. In the song, Alecto is being sung to to beguile her so that the snakes drop from her hair. Hello Year 10, so I'm just going to go through everything that I think is important enough for you to remember about Henry Purcell's music for a while, just on two sides of paper. So, let's start with the instrumentation. Um, The instrumentation is what instruments we have, they are the performing forces and how they are used. So we have two groups, three instruments. Let's start with the vocals. Now the vocals are sung by, in our version, a soprano, but in Purcell's version and in his day, they would have been done by either a countertenor or a castrati. Um, you have the harpsichord, and this is the keyboard instrument that would have been used because remember he was a Baroque composer and this was the keyboard instrument they had at the same time as he was around and then a bass viol which is like an olden day cello um, these two instruments together make up the basso continuo which remember is a continuous bass line now the harpsichord would do Um, the basso continuo in its left hand with the bass viol and then in the right hand would realise chords or improvise chords um, based on the notes of the basso continuo. Now this song is built on a ground bass. So that is a repeating bass line that is played by the basso continuo and it has several features um, that distinguish it. So The first one is that it is three bars long. Um, It has a lot of chromaticism from the rising semitones that it has throughout it. It is made using sequences, which is when you have a melody line and then you repeat it either higher or lower, but by the same intervals. It has all quaver rhythms so a bunch of these eight actually and then you have an octave jump at the end um, the last thing I want to talk about on this page is the fact that this piece of music is a lament which means it's a sad song um, the way that this is achieved by Purcell first of all is the tonality so the tonality is what type of key it's in. The key this piece is in, or in fact starts and finishes in, is in A minor. Um, The melody lines, or the phrases that make them, rather, all fall. And then the tempo is slow. So all of these things together make it sound like a lament. Other things we can talk about that are really important is the harmony um, and the tonality as I spoke about before. So it starts in A minor, but it does modulate to lots of different keys, but all these keys are related. So we have A minor to start with and then it goes to E minor, which would be the dominant because it is five notes up and then we have G major which will be the relative major of E minor so shares the same key signature of one sharp and that sharp will be F Um, we then have it 
go to C major, which will be G as its dominant. So it goes to C, and then that goes back to A minor, which is the relative minor of C major, which has no sharps or flats. Um, what else can we talk about possibly that is important enough for us to remember just on two pieces of paper whilst I'm running out of time? Um, we could talk about the form. The form in this piece of music is ternary. So though it's, although it's built on a ground bass, um, that is repeated with the lyrics and that will serve as our A section, which is music, music for a while. The bit that goes music for a while. And then we have our B section, which is when the snakes. So I'm just going to draw a little picture of a snake, sort of. There we go. Excellent. And then we have uh, our A section come back, although most of the time it's referred to as a1 because the singer would ornament or change the melody when they did it um, the second time and the harpsichord would realize their right hand slightly differently because it was improvised a um, couple of other things we can talk about word setting um, the word setting in this piece is mostly syllabic which means that every syllable has its own note so if we did music for example obviously um, music has two syllables so that would be one note for muse and one note for sick those syllables whereas if we did that melismatically which there are some examples of melisma um, that would be music, mute, u, zik, and you would have several different notes for a syllable like that. Um, the last thing I think we can talk about is word painting. Really, really important. Word painting is when the music reflects the tone or the theme of the lyrics. So we have several examples of this. One is on the word eternal, where eternal means something goes on forever. And when the singer sings this, the vocal phrase goes on for a very, very long time, almost three bars. Um, then we have a similar thing on the word drops, where the words are sung with really short quaver rhythms and they descend so like the dripping of a tap or drops of rain um, we have it on the words pained and eased where pained is a dissonance so a note that doesn't match the chord or a chord that doesn't match the key and then um, it is resolved on the word ease so where it does match it or it is consonant um, what else we've got? We've got one on whip, I think, as well, um, where we have like an akiakatura, which is a note that's got a little strike through it, which means it's really, really quick. And then the normal note, so it almost makes like a whoosh sound like a whip would do because it jumps really quickly from that note to the other note. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other stuff, but this is the stuff you need to remember and revise from. Have a lovely day.